just inside. If Barrett were here... We appear to have a visitor. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. Would you care to tell us what happened to our friend? Why you're here and he isn't? I see. Vasco, verify. All statements made have been factual. Uh, this is just typical. Barrett hands over our ship and our robot to some random employee of that discount mining outfit he uses. Walter. And if we hadn't insisted on installing those emergency protocols, I guarantee you this rock breaker here would be halfway to Neon. But that didn't happen. He's here with the artifact. Thank you, Matteo. Now, let's focus on what's in front of us, shall we? What happened when it was extracted? Did anyone see anything? Hear anything? We think it's anyone else who pulls one out of the rock for the first time. Why? We're not sure yet. So if you wouldn't mind adding another data point. Interesting. Similar to Barrett's description of the experience, with less embellishment. Are you hearing this? Do you all believe me now? Whether it happened or not wasn't in doubt. But honestly, country, if you expect us to believe in fairy tales... If this is the greatest mystery in the universe, why couldn't it be part of the ultimate mystery? But, gentlemen, can we please focus? Noel, I think it's time we tested your theory. Right. Let's see. We know the artifacts react to each other. The pieces we already have move when they're in close contact. Now, if we add this new one to the two we already have... The artifact. If you could place it on the table here. That's it. Just like the others. And to imagine, we thought there were only two of them at first. Oh my god, that's it. They're reacting. Look at how it's coming together. That energy that's arcing between them, no manufactured material in the settled systems can do that. None of them. This proves that... Easy, girl. Breathe. You'll have a heart attack. She's not the only one. If they're coming together, that means there's a set. Built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. Still 2,000 credits for our little wager, Katri? You're on, Walter. Well, if we had all the answers, it wouldn't be exciting, now would it? Not to take away from the moment, but what are we going to do about our new friend here? <laughs> so... Are you ready to get to work? See if exploration is the life you want to lead in this little universe of ours? We're all here because we're committed to exploring space. Humanity may have settled the stars, but that doesn't mean we should stop diving into the unknown. Beyond that, you'll be expected to use your own judgment just like the rest of us. You should take some time to get settled in. Introduce yourself to everyone. Some of our members aren't here, but you'll meet them soon. Come find me when you're ready. You and I are going to be doing some traveling together. Get your feet wet. And here, I think you've earned something for bringing the artifact to us. In addition to credits, why don't we set you up with a backpack with some boost capability, hmm? You'll need it out in the field anyway. Just mind your head. So, are you ready to get to work? Or was there something else? I don't know what you've heard, but I can imagine. First of all, I think you can dismiss any stories about us no longer existing, hmm? I don't believe in smearing our name everywhere we can. Exploring the universe, charting the unknown, that's what counts. Besides, 
Having a little mystery gives us room to maneuver. A fixed reputation could fence us in a lot of ways. Not much, but you've seen them for yourself. It doesn't take a lot to realize we're dealing with something extraordinary. Just what that is, we'll have to figure out. It's what we do. We're explorers. Humanity has always hunted for knowledge in the unknown. We just take that a little more seriously than others. We were founded decades ago by a man named Sebastian Banks. He wanted a small group of people from all corners of the settled systems dedicated to the biggest question of all. What's out there? These artifacts could be everything we've been looking for. Another great secret the universe is asking us to unravel. We're going to be doing some old-fashioned detective work. The artifacts are relatively inert once they're out of bedrock. That means people can pass them around, not even knowing what they are. I've been letting my contacts know to be on the lookout for strange metal objects. Get back a lot of noise, usually. But a tip from the UC Vanguard sounds promising. A volunteer force that helps defend the edges of United Colonies space. They're always looking for recruits. Lots of retired veterans and dangerous professionals mixed in with part-timers who barely have a laser cannon welded to a hull. My contact is in the recruiting office, so he hears a lot about what the volunteers are up to. Felt the same way when I started, too. There's an electricity in the air when you know you're about to uncover something. But it's not just that. I want to take this opportunity to see how you handle yourself, and for you to learn more about us. I'm going to be sticking with you for this. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact, or this lead runs dry. We'll need to head to Mast. Check in with the Vanguard recruiting office where my contact works. And listen. Whatever you were before, or whatever you do once you're out there, I don't care. So long as you don't bring UC security to our doorstep. Every member of Constellation is their own conscience. Understood? Good. Let's take a little stroll through New Atlantis, shall we? No, it's fine. Go ahead. My parents considered themselves to be enlightened, but their lives were so busy they rarely pursued their beliefs. By the time I was old enough to start questioning these things, the idea of following any organized religion was almost an afterthought. It's not that I don't want to believe in anything, it's that my scientific mind is often at odds with my spiritual center. Having been out there, in the Starfield, seeing all those magnificent wonders with my own eyes. I need answers, not religious theory. I'm sorry if that disappoints you, but don't worry. While we're on this journey together, I fully intend to respect your religious beliefs. You mean, apart from being the chair of Constellation for the past five years? Well, let's see. I pride myself with my aptitude for astrodynamics, calculating optimal trajectories for grab jumping. That's been quite useful in the past. And as far as planetary exploration, my area of expertise is botany. So don't worry, I won't let you eat anything that might put you in the hospital. <laughs> exploration is my entire life. I consider it both a career and recreation. That being said, I will make a confession, but you have to promise to keep it between us. Before I graduated from school, I was in a band. And no, I don't mean the school band. I mean a rock band. We called ourselves Ironic Comet. <laughs> 
<laughs> a ridiculous name, I know. But uh, we were just a bunch of teenagers getting together and having fun. And before you ask, no, I wasn't the lead singer. I actually played the drums. The band never really went anywhere, of course, but those were good times, and I remember them fondly. I'll be here. Here. You've earned this. Welcome to Constellation. As a full member this time. Honestly, this just makes it more official. Call it right person, right place, right time. But once the artifacts started coming together, you were one of us. We're going to do great things together. All of us. By the way, how would you like to keep traveling together? I'm not sitting behind my desk for this. These artifacts are a new chapter for Constellation, and I'm going to be out there for it. And I want you out there as well. You got results. <laughs> I need someone like you watching my back. All right. We've got a few more leads we should talk about. First, there's an expedition that Samco has been putting together. It's in Free Star Collective Space, and he knows it inside and out. There's also the Eye, our star station in orbit. About time for you to meet Vladimir. He's been hard at work tracking down more anomalies. And last but not least, Noel. Have we heard anything from Barrett yet? A courier from Argos Extractors came by to let us know they're packing up the operation on Vectera. But that's it. No other word. Mm, that's not good. We should get over there and check on Barrett in person. Oh, that's right. He wasn't here when you first showed up. He should be back by now. I'll let him handle the introductions. If I steal his thunder, I'll never hear the end of it. His mind is always somewhere, but there's no arguing his knack for being in the right place at the wrong time. Oh, too bad he couldn't see the artifacts coming together. But knowing him, he'll be so excited when he gets a look, it won't occur to him that he's missed anything. We maintain a star station in orbit above us. It's where we do all our deep space scanning. Vladimir runs the station. Brilliant astronomer. Years of practical experience. It's all important, but if you want a direction, I'd grab Barrett first. He's not just an old friend. He's been all over the settled systems. You can thank Barrett for that, if he's still around to thank when this is all said and done. Honestly, he took this seriously before any of us. It was at his urging that we started doing deep space scans. I will admit, it was something of a shock to see Barrett taking anything seriously. Thanks for taking the time to talk. I wanted to ask you about the artifact you found on Vectera. When you pulled it from the rock, held it in your hands for the first time, how did you feel? No, no, I, I don't think you understand. I know about the visions, the light, and the music. How did you feel inside? What were your thoughts? Oh my goodness, that must have been terrifying. When it comes to the artifacts, it never ceases to amaze me how the science, well, simply fails. Honestly, I wasn't sure how you'd react. 
Some people would consider what you went through a deeply personal experience. Oh, well, uh, I, uh, I enjoy hearing about them. <laughs> Professionally, of course. Either way, um, we need all the help we can get. The artifacts are so different, so alien. And I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. Quite the mystery. Agreed. Unfortunately, there's no way that I know of to reply. And believe me, I've been trying to gather data on the damn things for years. No, that's not it at all. Solving a mystery like this, it's an explorer's dream. Believe me, they're all as driven as I am to find an answer. I knew I picked the right person for the job. Look, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk, and for keeping an open mind. And I also wanted to say, well, I'm pleased we're on this journey together. <laughs> it's the best decision I've made in quite a long time. Yeah, what is it? Now that we have a moment, I wanted to ask how you're feeling. After your experience at the temple, you've given everyone at the lodge quite a scare. That's distressing, but to be expected, I suppose. According to what I've heard, your body absorbed an almost unquantifiable amount of energy of a type we can't even begin to understand. We're dealing with something unknown to modern science. Who knows how this encounter has affected your body or your mind? Well, good. I'm pleased to hear that. That temple proves we're dealing with entities of unknown origin. The problem is that we can't even begin to guess what their intention was towards us and where they've gone. Perhaps that's true, or perhaps you were simply quite lucky. It's just that... Oh, I'm afraid that we're flying almost completely blind here. All we know for certain at this point is that whoever created the artifacts are the same beings that built the temple. Anything else is just guesswork. I might as well put on a blindfold and toss darts at theories written on the wall. I'm not frustrated. I'm fascinated. Think about the significance of this research. The questions it raises alone are mind-boggling. Who was this wondrous structure built to accommodate? How long ago did these entities inhabit our universe? Are they still out there, somewhere? Perhaps. We'll need more data to be sure. It's funny. I used to think the artifacts were the end-all be-all of scientific discovery. The pinnacle mystery of our time. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine it would lead to something of this magnitude. I just hope that you'll come through this. Whatever it is. Unharmed. Well, <laughs> yes, of course you are. I was speaking of... The power you've acquired, uh, this is all scientifically speaking, of course. Look, I've already taken up too much of your time. All I can do is promise that I'm not going to make you deal with this mystery alone, whatever might be happening. 
I'll be right here to help you every step of the way. Hey. I wanted to talk to you, but honestly, I don't know where to begin. The Starborn's technology is simply astonishing. It's just almost too much to process. Yes, I suppose I am. But you can hardly blame me, can you? You do understand the significance of this encounter, don't you? This is humankind's first contact with what I believe is an alien race. A race with technology that could be far superior to our own. Oh, we could learn so much from them. Oh, I do. More than you'll ever know. Can't be a coincidence that these Starborn suddenly appeared after your experience at that temple. We know they're here to lay claim to the artifacts, but what's their true motivation? What aren't they telling us? I feel exactly the same way. But it certainly sounded like they weren't willing to work with us at all. Damn. Oh, if only we knew more about the Starborn. What their species is like, where they're from, how they're able to speak our language. Mm. I feel like a cadet on my very first day aboard a spaceship. My mind is absolutely swimming with questions. <sighs> Obviously. But there has to be more to these beings than simply originating from another world. Their name alone, Starborn. There's some type of hidden meaning there. Something that feels very old. Perhaps even ancient. Whatever the case may be, I can assure you that Constellation intends to get to the bottom of this mystery. Hmm, I'm not really sure. Scientifically speaking, we're all born from the stars. Most of the chemical components of our body, carbon, oxygen, sulfur, are exactly the same as those manufactured by internal stellar reactions. Now, ask someone like Matteo the same question, and he'd probably give a more theological answer. But hey, it's all a guessing game anyway. Exactly. We must use all of the tools at our disposal to learn more about the Starborn and their connection to the artifacts. Thank you. I really appreciate your support right now. You know, it's funny. When I was a little girl, I'd lay on the ground and stare up at the stars. I was absolutely convinced they held a secret. I'd remain there for hours in silence. Eyes closed, listening, waiting for the secret to be whispered in my ear. This encounter with the Starborn is that moment to me. The stars are finally whispering, and I need to hear what they have to say. Hmm. Although I'm flattered that you think of me that way, there's a time and a place for that sort of talk. This is definitely not one of them. Well then, I've certainly wasted enough of your valuable time. Just do be careful if you cross paths with these Starborn in the future. I wouldn't want to lose one of the most valuable members of Constellation. I'd like to speak to you. What can I help you with? Look. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you. The fact that you risked your life to save me, I... I don't know what to say. Well, yes, of course. But that's beside the point. 
My only wish is that my rescue hadn't come at the expense of Sam's life. He was one of my closest colleagues. And a cherished friend. Oh, poor Cora. I'm sure the poor thing is devastated. She's lost a wonderful father. <laughs> I really wish I could believe that. Our charter at Constellation has always been to analyze the unknown, but rarely at the expense of our members' lives. Yet all the while, I've been cavalier about taking risks and pushing the boundaries, not appreciating the true cost of my actions. <sighs> Had I not pushed so hard to pursue the Starborn, perhaps none of this would have happened at all and Sam would still be alive. No, she wouldn't. But was it worth the cost? Damn it! Why is this happening to us? We're explorers. Our curiosity pushes us to seek answers to life's mysteries. It's one of the core traits of humankind. Yet in return, this is what the universe throws at us. Beings from God knows where who are trying to murder us. Why? What have we done wrong? No, I refuse to allow Sam's death to be attributed to bad luck. It isn't fair. The question is, where do we go from here? Do we stop exploring? Stop pushing the boundaries? Take a more aggressive posture towards the universe? I don't know where to begin. You're right. I just hope we don't make the same fatal mistake twice. Well, I suppose that's all I had on my mind for now. Oh, it was a relief to get all of that out in the open. I'm sorry I got so angry. But I assure you, it's nothing personal. You're the only one I feel comfortable talking with about these things. Good. Because I expect this won't be the last time I intend to cry on your shoulder or scream in your face. Well, we have a long road ahead of us. I suppose it's high time we get back to work. Forgive me for pulling you aside again, but, well, there's so much to process right now. The Emissary, the Hunter, the Unity, an entire multiverse. I can't even begin to wrap my head around it all. That's an understatement. The fact that we are the origin of the Starborn. Humans literally reborn by entering the Unity. The same, yet different. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I feel like most of the knowledge we've amassed in the last few centuries about the universe has just been made obsolete. Yes, that's exactly right. Humans are clearly a victim of their own success. We've been pushing further and further outwards from our home, when we should have spent more time being prepared for the consequences. Our current problem relates closely to the nature of humans as a species. This rushed curiosity has led us to enter the Unity and become Starborn. Yes, and look what it's cost us. Here we are, caught in the middle of some sort of needlessly violent crusade between the Hunter and the Emissary. You'd think that a technologically advanced society would have evolved past petty squabbling over something like the artifacts. It almost makes me wonder if entering the Unity has done them more harm than good. Oh. 
Oh, absolutely. Their arrival in our universe is much too timely to be for any other reason. It's also clear that the need to collect these artifacts are an obsession for them, almost bordering on an addiction. That leads me to wonder what the Unity has done to their minds and their souls. No, no, that's not it at all. When you pass into whatever lies beyond, we don't know what will become of you. Will you remember your life as you knew it? Will the hunger to collect the artifacts consume your life like it's clearly consumed the Starborn? Of course not. I am, and always will be, an explorer at heart. My concern is how fundamental the change will be to ourselves as people. We don't even know if you'll remember anything about this conversation. I'm worried what that will mean between us. This goes well beyond the boundaries of simple exploration. As the Chair of Constellation, I want all of us to have this opportunity to explore the Unity. It would be the pinnacle exploration of our lives. However, after we enter the Unity, we'll likely evolve. You and I, as we stand here right now, will essentially cease to exist. You're a respected colleague, and I wouldn't want to lose you. I'm not sure. I'm guessing based on what we've learned. Even if I accompany you into the Unity, the question still remains. Would we know each other anymore? Even if we did, would we care? Part of what I do as Chair of Constellation is weigh the costs of our expeditions. And this one... Oh, the cost is extremely high. Yes, of course. Of course. Listen. I realize nothing that I say is ever going to change your mind or diminish the enticement of this incredible opportunity. All I ask is that you research the facts before you blindly stumble off into the unknown. I... I don't know if I'm ready to make that leap, but knowing we'd be doing it hand in hand would certainly make it more comforting. Well, I suppose I've ruined the moment again, haven't I? <laughs> I'm getting quite good at that lately. I'll let you get back to whatever you were doing. Just think what we discussed. I know I will. Discuss with you. Hey. Remember our last conversation, when you told me the artifacts made you feel like you were being pulled across the entire galaxy? Well. It got me thinking, so I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described, doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Arja just started flooding back. Arja Mamasa. She was the youngest member of Constellation when it was founded. Only took her 15 years to reach chair. Sorry, I sometimes get so caught up in my own bubble, I forget that I wasn't the first. Oh yes, absolutely. I, I didn't mean to compare. 
those were just, oh, I don't know, different times. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation and took me under her wing as her protégé. Hey, so I pinched a few ideas from my old boss. <laughs> Can you blame me? At any rate, we logged quite a few discoveries together, but it was the actual journey that I cherished the most. We catalogued unusual stellar phenomena, a few habitable worlds, and some unique life forms, but nothing SSNN would bother to report. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of cozy isolation the best way to really get to know someone. Yeah, you know, being alone in interstellar space, nothing but light years of black around you. Some people find that terrifying. I find it comfortable. It helps me bond with my shipmates. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. You know, all this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I miss her dearly. I respected her, and I considered her a dear friend, but we weren't in love. Had that been true, I would have resigned my post and moved to Parima 2 instead of remaining at Constellation. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit, and I could make proper introductions. Oh, don't worry. There's no bad blood between us. The worst that might happen is you get stuck listening to two old friends catching up on old times. Well, I don't expect you to be a carbon copy of Aja. Just be yourself. You see, it's clear that we share the same hunger to discover what's out there. And that... Well, that's what intrigues me about you. I... I don't know if I deserve to be that close to anyone right now. If you knew about the things that I've done, the way my life's unfolded, I think your opinion of me might change. Please, give me some time. I... I, I, I have to go. So this is it. This armillary can finally be assembled, and the Starborn are sure that something will happen on the other side. Something that will make us like them. Funny. I thought after all this time I'd be screaming in excitement to jump into the unknown, but I feel like I'm hesitating. I was just taking for granted that Constellation would keep going, past the end. But we don't know what's waiting for us. Say we go to the Unity, become Starborn, enter another universe. Will there even be a Constellation there? It won't be ours, even if it is.
I really turned you into a true believer, didn't I? Oh, what have I done? Ah, <sighs> all right. Let's get back to it. One more jump into the unknown. You came back. I thought... I, I was sure you were going to... But then I guess... Neither did I. You will. Eventually. The call of seeing what's out there will get to you. But I suppose a little more time here couldn't hurt. What was it like? Being in the Unity. I wonder if that's why the Starborn are willing to fight each other over getting it. Just for that one moment to feel like you're a part of everything. I'm glad to see you again. But don't stay here forever, okay? Don't give up on the opportunity to step into a whole other universe. I'm holding you to that. Now, let's get back out there. Thanks for taking time to chat. I... I really need a friendly ear right about now. I received a message from Constellation, and it's given me a lot to think about. No, no, it's nothing like that. It's just a list of requests. Things I would normally handle if I was there. <sighs> but I'm not. I'm out here instead with you. You're not keeping me out here. I am. Just... Here. Let me explain. Before I joined Constellation, I served for eight years as the head of the Navigator Corps, until the UC decided to axe the department. Yeah, I suppose painful is an appropriate way to put it. You see... The top brass demanded press-worthy discoveries to justify the spending, and money was tight after the war. Shutdown was inevitable. At the end of the day, I was in charge, so the blame obviously fell on my shoulders. <sighs> yeah? You once told me that you favored the journey over the destination. So I'm hoping you'll understand what I'm trying to say. I failed because I was more concerned about exploring the stars than pushing a pencil. Ah, because of my lack of foresight, all I ended up with was a shuttered division and a bunch of excuses. That's just it, though. Did I push too hard? Did they shut us down because I wasn't quietly sitting at my desk approving meaningless memos? We'll never know. No, damn it. For once, I'm going to say what's on my mind instead of pretending that everything's okay. Call it whatever you... It elevates me to the... Yes, exact... If it's obvious... Oh my god. <sighs> Look, it's clear that you have... feeling. Please, it's not you. It's me. But thank you for being there. Yes? Until later.
Thanks for taking time to chat. I... I really need a friendly ear right about now. I received a message from Constellation, and it's given me a lot to think about. <laughs> no, no. I wish it was that simple. It's not from Barrett specifically. It's a line list of questions they need answered. Only I'm not there to answer them. Something like that. <laughs> it's difficult to explain. Before I joined Constellation, I served for eight years as the head of the Navigator Corps, until the UC decided to axe the department. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Some more than others. You see, the top brass demanded pressworthy discoveries to justify the spending, and money was tight after the war. Shutdown was inevitable. At the end of the day, I was in charge, so the blame obviously fell on my shoulders. Oh, like hell I can't. You once told me that you favored the journey over the destination, so I'm hoping you'll understand what I'm trying to say. I failed because I was more concerned about exploring the stars than pushing a pencil. If I had fought harder, I'm convinced our division may have had a chance to prove its value. That's just it, though. Did I push too hard? Did they shut us down because I wasn't quietly sitting at my desk approving meaningless memos? We'll never know. Well, that brings us to this message now, doesn't it? Call it whatever you want. My drive, my initiative, my optimism. <laughs> it's been my greatest strength and my worst nightmare. It elevates me to these positions of authority, but all I want to do is explore, not sit and make sure all the accounts are balanced. Yes, exactly. If it's obvious to you, imagine how obvious it is to someone like Barrett or Matteo. Oh, they must be itching to replace me by now. God damn it. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Oh, here you are trying to help me and I'm yelling at you. <sighs> you have to understand. Once Aja retired, I lost the only person that gave a damn. Look, it's clear that you have feelings for me. It's just... I've never had time for this sort of thing in my life. Please, it's not you. It's me. I'm just not ready to get that close. I can't. Not now. But thank you for being there and listening. It helped. It really did. I have an important personal decision to make, but I need to discuss something with you first. Phew, thank you. So, where to start? Um, before I was with the Navigator Corps, I was career military, part of the United Colonies Navy. When the Colony War broke out, I was posted as the chief navigator on a warship, the Dauntless. Well, the position didn't last long. There was a particularly bloody battle. We were fighting over a world in the Aeta Cassiopeia system. Worst fighting I'd ever seen. We lost 12 ships that day. 12 passengers. Including May I have your attention, please? The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. 
No. This is important. I need to tell you this. The ship was barely intact. The captain and first mate died the previous day, which put me in command. A shrewd captain would have called for the crew to abandon ship, but I was so angry. I wanted to stay. I needed to fight. <sighs> I believe you, but you haven't heard the worst of this. We fought for hours, but the damage was fatal. I gave the order to abandon ship and the crew piled into the escape shuttle. As the shuttle launched, I could see it was damaged. I... I heard screams before the radio cut. The last thing I saw, they were... spiraling helplessly towards the planet's surface. There was... There was nothing I could do. You're sorry. For me? If I hadn't been so stubborn, so eager to prove that I could handle command, my crew would have had more time to escape. My superiors. When the dust settled, the United Colonies gave me a medal. Can you believe that? A damn medal. I never even had a chance to find the shuttle wreckage and give my crew a proper burial. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive further instructions. After I checked every section of the ship for wounded crew, I took the other escape shuttle. If I hadn't, I would have died. The Dauntless came apart minutes after I escaped. Bad luck. That sounds familiar. Remember when you said no one but me would have pushed harder to keep the Navigator Corps going? Well, this time, pushing too hard cost lives. Don't you get it? Everything I do, everything I touch, somehow falls apart. That's why I'm worried about us. All this nonsense, and you still have faith, eh? You really care about me, don't you? You know, I've spent a lot of time thinking about us. About our relationship. How we've clearly become close. I practiced what I was going to say when the moment was right, and now that it's here, my mind's gone oh, blank. <laughs> ah. May I have your you deserve the, the best. Someone who can give themselves Please to you entirely. In but right now, I have too much baggage. Too much on my mind. I hope you'll forgive me for pushing you away. I just need time. I need to discuss with you. Ever since we talked about the Battle of Cassiopeia, I can't get what happened out of my mind. Was it that obvious? Oh, I thought I could handle these memories, but until I return to Cassiopeia, I'll never be able to put this to rest. I would like that. Actually, I need that. One problem, though. Pinpointing the crew's shuttle wreckage is going to be like trying to find a grain of salt in a sandbox. I think we need to start by locating my old campsite on Cassiopeia 1. What's there to tell? I survived. My crew didn't. Still, oh, I'll never forget my finger hovering over that launch button. Would I launch safely, or... Explode into a fireball. 
It turned out that my shuttle had just enough power to allow an emergency landing on the planet's surface. I wouldn't call what I did a soft landing, but thank you all the same. Hold on. I don't know the exact location of my survival campsite. For that, we are going to have to head to Mast and see if we can get the information from my old friend, Admiral Logan. Your instincts are right on target. Logan and I butted heads more than once during my time with the Navigator Corps. We've never seen eye to eye. Look, I hope this isn't asking too much. Last thing I want to do is drag you into some kind of personal crusade. That's why I'm desperate for your help. Truth is, I'm scared. When I set foot on Cassiopeia, I don't know if I'll be able to handle what I find. If I begin to fall apart, I need someone I can trust to hold me together. I know you will. You've always been there when I've needed your help. Why you continue to support me, I'll never understand. I... I don't know what to say. Ah, oh, I've been so busy searching the stars for answers. I've overlooked what's been in front of me all this time. True love. Something I've seriously considered sharing with you for a long time. Just... not ready. Not yet. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely right. Hey, um, anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. I know you have a lot to do. I really appreciate your offer to visit Cassiopeia. Hopefully, it'll bring me the closure that I've needed for far too long. If you don't mind, I'd like to speak to Admiral Logan sooner rather than later. Not at all. You can ask me anything. Honestly, it felt like I was marooned on that planet for years. It wasn't until the UC rescue ship picked me up that I realized only ten months had passed. The escape shuttle had some supplies, but those ran out after about a month. Fortunately, Cassiopeia is a lush planet with plenty of flora and fauna, so I was able to use my military training to survive. Logan and I have rarely agreed on anything. In fact, I'm fairly certain he never saw the true value in the Navigator Corps in the first place. When word came down that my division was being mothballed, I stormed into his office and, well, let's just say we had words. Mm. We haven't spoken since. Okay, back to it then. Sarah Morgan. It's been, what, almost ten years? Admiral, it's, uh, good to see you again, sir. You're not required to address me as sir. That protocol ended the moment you dropped your clusters on my desk, remember? Look, Admiral, I'm not here to open old wounds. Old wounds is an interesting turn of phrase, given our past. Listen to me, Commander. I'm not sure why you're here, but whatever it is, why don't you just get to it? I'm here because I need your help, Admiral. You need my help. That's interesting. The last time we spoke, you made it quite clear that you were turning your back on the Navy. That was a decade ago. Things change. People change. Admiral, please. I didn't come here to argue. I'm here to come to terms with my past. Your past is sitting in a closed file in the Archives. That's where you left it when you walked out on the United Colonies. And what about you? Just who in the blazes are you anyway?
very well. Then, as a good friend, perhaps you could kindly explain to me why I shouldn't have the both of you escorted from the building. With all due respect, Admiral, this is ridiculous. If you have a problem with me, then there's no need to berate my colleague. I don't have a problem with you, Commander. I'm simply trying to determine why you deserve the Navy's help. That's quite a noble gesture. Is this true, Commander? It's about Cassiopeia, Admiral. I'm heading back there to find out what happened to the crew of the Dauntless, and hopefully, to bring their legacy home. That sounds like a dangerous operation. Are you certain it's worth the risk? I... I don't know. I see. The fact that you'd risk your own lives to solve this mystery speaks volumes. They were my responsibility, Admiral. One way or another, I intend to bring them home. I understand. And I believe I owe you an apology, Commander. Our last encounter has obviously distorted my impression of your character. What can I do to help? If you wouldn't mind allowing me to access the files regarding my rescue, I'd be most grateful, Admiral. That shouldn't be too difficult. I've sent all the relevant information to your slates. Was there anything else? No, Admiral. Thank you. You don't need to thank me, Commander. I just hope you find whatever it is you're looking for. I can't believe I'm here. It feels like walking into a dream. Oh, thank you. Right now, I feel like I need all the help that I can get. Phew. Okay, so, let me get my bearings for a moment. Yes. Yes, this looks correct. Those rock formations nearby look familiar. My old campsite shouldn't be far. Knowing that is the only reason that I'm here. <sighs> Once we get to the campsite, we'll use that as a starting point to search for the crew's shuttle wreckage. <sighs> Let's go. Well... This is it. This is the spot where I spent close to a year waiting for rescue. Not exactly Paradiso, is it? Huh. I wish. I was so uncomfortable. I would have settled for a pile of straw. Look at this thing. It's been sitting here rusting. I think we need to grab an emergency power cell to get the ship's computer up and running. Sure, if we're lucky. When I was stranded, I set up a distress beacon powered by emergency power cells. The beacon was up there on the plateau. I guess it's time to start climbing. We've located where the other shuttle went down. I can't believe our plan worked. Well, we're not there yet, but damn, it does feel good. Hmm. The telemetry data puts the wreckage out of range to hike. We're going to have to head back to the ship and land on a different part of the planet. Let's get going. Stop! Oh. I'll shoot if I have to! Just turn around and, and leave. I know how to use this thing, and I will. Oh my god. Who are you? I'm nobody. Just go away. I'm not going to let anyone take my stuff again. No way. Both of you, just go!
Yeah, sure. Try and trick me. No, no way. I I'm not getting fooled again. Forget it. Stop it right now. Put away that gun and talk to us. We want to know what happened here. See? You're not nice at all. I knew it. You're a liar. That's all grown-ups do is lie. What? Oh. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I was wrong to get so angry. We are here to help you. And we promise to tell the truth. I don't know. You're kind of scaring me. Why should I listen to you? The crew? No one's been looking for that crew since before I was born. So tell me another lie. Go ahead. You were born here. Hold on. Oh my god. Your parents. Your mum and your dad. What were their names? Jenna and Elias. Why? Jenna and Elias. Private Jenna Marsh and Corporal Elias Oberist. You're their... daughter. Listen to me. I knew your parents. They worked with me on the Dauntless. I'm Commander Sarah Morgan. You're Sarah Morgan? Mom and Dad's captain? My parents used to talk about you all the time. It's like a dream to finally meet you. My parents told me she was in command of their ship in a huge battle. They said she was a hero and the bravest person they ever knew. I know this is Cass... Cassiopeia. I've been here since I was born. I know my mother and father were from Gemson or something like that. I bet it's like a thousand miles away. Yeah? Well, I wish you wouldn't have taken so long. My parents are dead. My father died a long time ago. And my mother, she was killed by those, those monsters at the graveyard. It's just me here now, all by myself. Let me ask you a question. Oh, actually, I don't even know your name. Oh, yeah. My name's Sona. Sona. <laughs> what a lovely name. Sona. You mentioned a graveyard. Is that where the crew is, um, you know? Buried? Yeah. It's a bunch of stones with those necklaces like the ones my mom and dad had hanging on them. Thank you, Sona. I'm going to talk to my friend here a minute, okay? Okay, Sarah. Phew. I don't even know where to begin. Whew. Yeah. That's probably good advice. Oh, there's so much to process. But I don't have time to deal with it right now. If you want to help, then find that graveyard and bring me those necklaces Sona mentioned. I'm hoping they're my crew's gene tags. Good. Just be careful. Sona's monsters are undoubtedly hostile life forms that have claimed the graveyard as their territory. Listen to me. It 
It's much too dangerous to stay here all by yourself, darling. I don't care. This is my home. You can't make me leave. We can't leave her here. It's not safe. She has to come back with us to Jemison. Oh, I don't know what to do. Can you talk to her? I knew I could depend on you. Now all we have to do is convince this poor girl that she's better off leaving the planet with us. I just... I don't know if I have it in me to say the right things. I can hear you talking about me. And I don't care what either of you say. I'm not going anywhere. Look, I'm clearly out of my element here and not in the right state of mind. Could you just talk to her, please? Why won't Sarah listen to me? That doesn't make a lot of sense. She's only known about me for a little while. That still doesn't mean I should leave the only home I ever had, does it? I... I, I never thought of it that way. But... Uh, leaving mom and dad behind... It's really hard. Even though they're dead, I don't want to abandon them. Yeah, you're right. I never thought of it that way. I'm sorry I yelled at everybody. I know you and Sarah are just trying to help. I'm going to go get my stuff and then I'll board your ship. Don't worry, I'll stay out of the way until we get, well, wherever we're going. That poor girl. I hope we've made the right decision. Oh, I do hope that's true. We're ripping Sona from the only home she's ever known, and casting her back into society. It's going to be difficult for her to adjust to the changes. Wherever she ends up, just promise me we'll check on her from time to time, please. Thank you. Look, um, before we leave Cassiopeia behind, I wanted to say one more thing to you. Perhaps at the Overlook we passed on the way here? I promise it won't take long. Let's go. Look, before we head back to the ship, I wanted to tell you how much of an amazing gift this has been. You had to push me to come out here, and if I hadn't have listened to you, the universe would probably have never known about that little girl. Oh, yes. Absolutely. And it's all thanks to you. You know, this is the second time I've been on this world. And until this very moment, I never stopped to reflect at just how magnificent it was. Oh, look at this place. This is the reason I'm out here, exploring the stars. Worlds upon worlds just waiting to have their beauty discovered. Shedding this burden of my past has finally allowed me to open my eyes, wider than they've ever been opened before. And it's all because of you. Perhaps. I suppose we'll both have to think about that for a while now, won't we? Ah, <sighs> well. I suppose it's time to bid goodbye to Cassiopeia once again. This time, under much happier circumstances. Now, let's head back to Jemison. I want to give those gene tags you gathered to Admiral Logan, and figure out what we're going to do with Sona. Hey there.
If you think it will help, then feel free. It had to be blind luck. The shuttle had almost zero propulsion and no defensive shielding. It would have taken a hell of a pilot to land the ship without it breaking into a million pieces. I've been giving that a lot of thought. I'm going to suggest she stay at the launch, but I don't want her to think that I'm forcing her to follow in my footsteps. At the very least, it should give her a safe place from which she can adjust to her new way of life. It's never easy, you know, making decisions that could end the lives of soldiers pledged to your cause. Welcome back. Did you find your answers? Not only that, but we found someone there, alive. A child born from two of the crew that survived the crash. After her parents died, that poor girl spent years surviving on that hostile world, alone. We abandoned her, Admiral. We let her down. I'm sorry. I had no idea. How could we have possibly known? Yes, of course. I think we can all agree that this was another unfortunate circumstance of the Colony War. What you'd call an unfortunate circumstance, I call a tragedy. You're absolutely right, Sarah. It is a tragedy. One thing that I can assure you is that the names of these men and women will never be forgotten. I'll see to it personally. Thank you, Admiral. Good luck to both of you. It's been an honor. Once we're done here, we should have a little talk with Sona. Poor thing's waiting for us at the lodge. I guess we need to talk. There you are. I was wondering when he'd come and say hi to me. Hello, Sona. I see you found your way to the lodge without any trouble. Yeah, it was kind of hard, though. All these people around. Never seen so many people in my entire life. I think I like it. I don't know yet, but it's all really new to me. You'll fit in just fine. You're one of the smartest people I've ever met. So, what do you think? Do you like it here, Sona? At the lodge? Yeah, this place is huge. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. You must be like a bazillionaire, Sarah. <laughs> oh, don't I wish. This place isn't mine alone. It belongs to everyone who's a part of Constellation. And I think it should belong to you too, Sona. I want you to stay here and make this your home. Whoa. Does that mean I get to go exploring with both of you? Or wait, do I get my own ship? Well, uh, Auntie Sarah can't exactly afford that right now, but she can provide you with the best exploration training in the galaxy. I understand. Oh, and don't worry, I learn real fast, so you better get ready to have another member of Constellation signing on for missions. I can't wait. Well, anyway, thanks for letting me stay here. I promise I won't let either of you down. I'm sure that you won't. Well... I think we should let Sona get settled. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to visit the Colony War Memorial now. I want to, uh, to pay my final respects. Look at this. All these people, their entire lives distilled down to names on a memorial. I wonder how close I came to being reduced to just a name. I am proud. <laughs> I was simply too foolish to realize it until you changed my perspective. And I care about you too. There's obviously some kind of a connection between us that 
I think we need to discuss. Just let me have another moment here, and then we can head over to the waterfall, so we can talk in private. It's lovely here, isn't it? <laughs> I've been from one end of the settled systems to the other, but this place... This exact spot. There's nowhere else like it in the galaxy. I hadn't thought of it that way. But you're absolutely right. I usually come up here to mull over some of the heated debates we have at Constellation. You'd be surprised how many decisions I've made on this very spot. That's actually why I asked you to meet me up here. <clears throat> I was hoping we could talk about something very important. I know you are. Just give me a moment. I have a lot I need to say. It's about my return to Cassiopeia. What we learned about Sona has been constantly replaying in my mind. Oh, maybe it sounds crazy, but that young girl's isolation feels like a reflection of my own life. Maybe. But for how long? I've spent my life surrounded by all sorts of people. Constellation, the Navigator Corps, Hell, even the UC military. Despite that, no matter how hard I've tried to make them a part of my life, they tend to drift away and disappear. Are you sure? For all we know, it's in my nature to keep people at arm's length. Or worse, push them away. Finding someone like that would be wonderful. Wait a second. What exactly are you saying? Ha! Huh. <sighs> Sorry, I am. Um, I just need a moment to gather my thoughts. From things you've said in the past, it's obvious you want to have a serious relationship. You want to become close. So, if you're willing to take that leap of faith with someone like me, then I'm ready to do the same. You're something truly special. You know that? You've helped me conquer my self-doubt, my confidence, hell, everything. For the first time in my life, I feel... complete. <laughs> and with you by my side, I'm convinced that feeling will last forever. You're the best thing that's happened to me in my life. I love you. Always. When things at the Lodge are too much, I love to this spot to just sort of... I don't know... melt away for a while. Oh, I can tell I'm going to like this. I don't deserve someone as amazing as you. How the hell did I get so lucky? I've never felt so... comfortable. It's... Wonderful to have this kind of stability in my life right now. Good. Any time you want to talk about our relationship, just let me know. God knows you've done that enough times for me. I'd like to discuss. 
I received a message from my mother a few days ago. She's returned from another one of her sightseeing cruises. Why would you be... Oh, I see. We never talked about this, did we? The truth is that my mother lives in a fairly remote location, so we rarely speak to one another. Good. When I say that to most people, they look at me like I'm crazy. I don't think they realize how much control parents can exert on your life, especially when their dreams conflict with your own. No. We should have discussed this a long time ago. You see, both of my parents were diplomats working under the flag of the UC Administrative Division. After I completed my basic education, they signed me up for a one-year apprenticeship in their department, without bothering to ask. Hmm. Wanted isn't the right word. Demanded would be more appropriate. For my apprenticeship, I was sent to Sidonia. My job consisted of drafting political policies and arbitrating trade disputes. The silver lining of the job was that it allowed me to spend time exploring every square inch of Mars. I was swallowed by it. Months before the apprenticeship ended, I dumped my diplomatic certification and joined the UC Navy. Of course, my parents didn't approve. We had a huge argument that resulted in all ties being severed between us. Yes, I was proud of myself for a while. You see, my father was killed during the opening shots of the Colony War. I returned to Jemison for the funeral and reunited with my mother. After that, we vowed to stay in touch. No, <laughs> aren't you sweet? Always concerned with how I'm feeling. That's why I fell in love with you. Your smile, your caring. <laughs> it brightens even my darkest days. Listen, I'm going to be completely upfront with you. All this talk of family, it makes me wonder where our own relationship stands. You mean that? You'd do that? For me? I've been dreaming about this moment and still... I don't know what to say. <laughs> yes! Yes! Of course! Yes! Ah, I just need a little time to think about the ceremony. I have some thoughts about how we should move forward. You know, I used to dream about finding the love of my life. And here you are. All I ever needed was you, right here beside me. So, I've given everything we've discussed a lot of thought, and I've decided I'd like Aja Mamasa to conduct our marriage ceremony. I remember Aja mentioning she presided over a previous commitment ceremony between Barrett and his husband Irvin. Besides, the thought that Aja would be there to officiate this important step in my life is... comforting. I hope you don't mind. I knew you'd understand. So, with that settled, I suppose we just keep it a quiet ceremony? Just the two of us?
Honestly, no. I respect everyone at Constellation, but this is part of my personal life. If it's all the same to you, I'd like to keep my personal feelings about us separate from Constellation. Oh, that's sweet of you to suggest, but I think bringing Sona all the way to Arja's home would be too much anxiety for the poor girl. We need to give her some time. If anyone else had suggested that, I'd say no. But hearing it from you, I know in my heart that it's the right thing to do. I'll send her an invite and we'll see if she shows. Anyone else? Or will the three of us with Aja presiding be enough? All right, it's settled then. I'll send a message to Aja, asking for her to preside over the ceremony. As soon as you're ready, let's head to Paradiso. <laughs> I can't tell you how much this means to me. I love you. As we were landing, I picked up a message from Aja. She said to meet us at the park overlooking the ocean. Before we go to the ceremony, I want you to look me in the eyes and tell me this is exactly what you want. Ah, oh, I just melt when I hear you say things like that to me. I love you. And I'm forever thankful to have someone as amazing as you in my life. Now come on. Aja is waiting for us. But first, we should probably say something to my mother. It certainly was nice of you to think of me when sending invitations to my daughter's wedding. It's good to see you too, Mum. I just wish you would have given me more notice. Or maybe some time to get to know your dear partner. I barely even know his name. Yes, good to meet you too, my dear. If only my daughter had thought to introduce us sooner. We could have built more of a rapport before this big day. We'll have plenty of time to talk more later, I'm sure. After the ceremony. Anyway, I'm sorry, Mum. I know how this must all seem to you. This was a sudden decision, and we didn't want to waste any more time. We wanted to keep the ceremony small, and involve only the people I care about the most. Sarah, dear. I hope you know that I am delighted to be here, to see you finally get married. It's been a long time coming, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Thank you for coming, Mum. We'll be sure to talk more in a bit. But for now, let's not keep poor Aja waiting. Just a few moments for everyone to take their places. It's so lovely to see you, Sarah. It's wonderful to see you too, Aja. This is the one I told you about. I've heard a lot about you. All of it good. You're quite a catch. Ten seconds in, and already you're embarrassing everyone. Before we go any further, I just want to make sure that you are right for Sarah. She's quite special, hmm? Oh, God. Now you're embarrassing me. <laughs> That's called love, my dear. You better get used to it. Well, I've seen enough. I can read people the moment I lay eyes on them. And you, you're going to make Sarah quite happy. Coming from you, Aja, that means a lot. Of course, Sarah. You know I always look out for you. Now, are we ready to begin the ceremony? Very well. If everyone's ready, then I'll begin. It's been years since Sarah Morgan and I have spoken. And though it might appear that we've grown apart, I feel that we've become closer friends than ever before. When I received the message with Sarah's intent to marry, and that she wanted me to officiate the ceremony, 
I was overwhelmed with joy. Not because she had decided to rekindle our friendship, but because she was allowing me to share the happiest moment of her life. I can't imagine a greater honor. And for that, Sarah, I thank you. I wouldn't have had it any other way, Aja. Before you present your vows, I'd ask both of you to remember that love is what brought you together today. It is a foundation upon which a structure of trust, faith, and affirmation is built. This structure can be absolutely impenetrable if you both agree to love each other unconditionally with faith, devotion, and acceptance. And most importantly, to allow yourself to be loved. Remember, there are no other bonds more meaningful than the one you are undertaking today. You should cherish this moment and hold it close to your hearts as a reminder of the love you share. If you both are willing to abide by these words, then you can be assured that your lives will be filled with joy and happiness forever. That was beautiful, Asha. Thank you. Did you need a moment, Sarah? No. No, I'm fine. But I wanted to say something before you continue. When we stood beside that waterfall in New Atlantis, you told me that I deserve to be with someone who understands my feelings. It was at that very moment I realized I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you. Your love means everything to me. And I swear to return that love freely and unconditionally without hesitation. This is my solemn pledge to you. From deep within my heart, from deep within my soul, for all eternity. And you? Did you have anything you wanted to say to Sarah? I know it will. I don't deserve someone as special as you. You had a gift, Sarah? Yes. I wanted you to have this as a token of our love. I'm giving this to you as a symbol of the clean break I've made from my past. Oh, it would have been impossible without your help. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. With these promises of affection and these vows you've exchanged, by the power vested in me by the Articles of Constellation, I happily pronounce you life mates. Congratulations! Aja, I don't know what to say. That was... Oh, amazing. <laughs> I couldn't imagine having the ceremony without you. I'm glad everything worked out for you, Sara. I'm only sorry that we waited so long to reach out and contact one another. It was my pleasure. Well, you're both welcome to stay here for as long as you like. Sara, your mother will be staying here with me for a few weeks. We've actually got a lot more in common than I expected. So, I guess this is goodbye for now. I wish the both of you a happy and healthy life together. I'll never forget this, Aja. Thank you. It was a wonderful wedding. Let me guess. <laughs> you missed me and you couldn't stay away. I'm loved. You have no idea how wonderful that makes me feel. If it keeps us close, 
then I'll gladly say those words every time you ask. Well, hello, sunshine. Of course you can, sweetie. Every time you say those things, it feels like I'm in heaven. I really do hope you're truly the one for my daughter. It was not quite what I had imagined for Sarah. I thought it would be a grand affair with hundreds of friends and extended family gathered to celebrate. But given her history, I should say I'm not entirely surprised she chose something completely different. <laughs> However, despite that, I must say that this was truly something special. It was quite splendid. Just the two of you, myself, and Adja. From the bottom of my heart, thank you again for having me. Oh, gosh, really? Uh, we're doing this, are we? Oh, can I? When Sarah was six, I believe? She lost her second tooth, but this time she actually lost it. I forget how it happened exactly, but it ended up going out with the waste as we were flying between Jemison and... Oh, I forget where. It's not important. She was so distraught. Mummy, what if the tooth fairy doesn't know I lost a tooth and doesn't come? <laughs> she cried. So I told her to write a note and leave it under her pillow for the Tooth Fairy. So she ended up explaining what had happened and begged the Tooth Fairy for a spaceship so she could go off and find her lost tooth for her. <laughs> it was adorable. Thanks, Mother. Just... Oh, thanks for that. Mostly the physical distance between us. It wasn't intentional. I'll have you know. Our lives simply diverged as she grew older. You may not know this, but we had different plans for her when she was growing up. I've since come to terms and accepted that she didn't want to follow in her parents' footsteps. Perhaps... Hmm. She needs to hear it from me. I need to make it more clear to her that I'm proud of her, regardless of her choices. I need to. If I want to be closer to my daughter and her new partner. Damn it. Do we have to get up already? One of these days, we need to actually get some sleep after going to bed. So lucky to wake up every day to someone like you. Get any rest? I sure didn't. That huh, was a perfect way to end the day. You uh, have a med pack? tired than when we went to bed. Talk about seeing stars. <laughs> that was amazing. That was quite a workout. Hope you had as much fun as I did. You thought that was crazy? Try it in zero G sometime. Remember when I said I like to be close to you? <laughs> now you know exactly what I meant. Where the hell did you learn to do all of that? <laughs> oh, please don't say neon. Mm. I wish all of 
our moments together could last forever. Hey there, sleepyhead. What's the matter? Did I wear you out? I'm all for getting a little wild, but next time let's try it without the jetpacks, hmm?